Because I want you to take a look at a couple of tweets. The people who tweeted it, it's not important. Not important. What's important is what they're saying and the kind of reach that it got that they're getting and the timing of it. I want you to take a look at this first one. Um, he said, essential workers have a valid reason to be upset about people sitting at home getting six hundred dollars. LOL. Now, again, I don't care about who the individual is. Pretty small account. But I want you to look at the reach of this tweet. Sixty five thousand retweets, two hundred and sixty nine thousand likes. This message. It, and actually, let me keep going before I even go. Here's another one. Um, here someone said, I worked my ass off at Amazon with a hot and sweaty mask, risking my life while unemployment got $600 sitting on their ass. Make it make sense. Okay. This, this, this is what I kind of got. I, I had my suspicions that this was coming. And then I started seeing one tweet and then another. And I'm like, mm, something, something coordinated is happening here. At the very time where Congress is discussing uh, uh, continuing the $600 a week benefit for people who are unemployed. And then all of a sudden, here come more tweets. Here's, people on unemployment shouldn't have got the extra $600. They should have gave that to essential workers. Hmm. Again, the individual, the people, that, that, that doesn't matter because they're small accounts. And this is not about putting those individuals on blast at all. It's about the idea that is that exists like i'm not trying to suggest that these ideas are a coordinated psyop right what i'm saying is this type of thinking exists and all it takes is a handful of people with enough reach to create this division or to exacerbate the division that already exists because America has invested in a, a, this capitalistic system across the globe has invested tremendous Amounts of money and resources into making sure that the poor will always be mad at other poor people. And most of all, for people to not even understand that they are poor. But let me read a couple of more. Look at this one. Th th this one right here, man. This is the one I wanted to like. I wanted to burn Twitter down. I wanted to get some some hackers and just burn the whole thing to the ground. She said the money should have been sent to the landlords first. And then the remainder sent to the unemployed. Let me tell you, I, I, these are and these I mean, that last one didn't get a lot of reach, but they, I just wanted to throw that in there so that you can understand my pain. OK, <laughs> I want you to be sure about something that while I understand very clearly and I want you to also understand very clearly that this is the type of thinking that is ingrained in our capitalistic consumer society. And these are very real thoughts from very real people. I do also want you to recognize that, that, that this is lockstep with the ruling elite who want to not give us anything and want to give billionaires and corporations everything. And so while these people's thoughts are genuine and they probably really feel this angst, the reality of it is, is they are useful idiots being servants of the ruling elite that I don't know. Maybe they think one day they will become a part of the ruling elite. That is the, the, the American delusion. The American dream is the American delusion. And these people have bought into it. Furthermore, they have pit themselves, poor people against other poor people, workers against workers, unemployed workers. Yes, but still workers. Nevertheless. And, and we have workers making enemies of other workers, completely ignoring it, particularly that one tweet. I'll pull it back up on your screen, screen. The one where the, the, uh, the person, the individual. Is saying that she worked her ass off at Amazon and put her life at risk. Yes, you did. And yes, you have people fighting on your behalf. Christopher Smalls leading a whole revolution at Amazon, lost his job fighting on your behalf. But even more importantly than that. You're mad at unemployment workers getting $600 a week. Jeff Bezos got $13 billion in a single day. The, again, this boils down to the, to the framework that I gave you yesterday. Who do you blame for the problems of the world, of society? Do you blame the most powerful people in the world or the, most, the people with the least amount of power in the world? Do you, do, you, do you turn your energy and your rage towards the powerful or the powerless? 
And how utterly ridiculous is it for someone who has no power to turn around and blame someone else who has no power? Why do we do it? Because it's easy. It is easier to go against another poor person, another worker, another laborer than it is to go, out, go against capital, than it is to go against the ruling elite, than it is to go against the bosses, to go against Jeff Bezos. $13 billion in one day and you're f***ing worried about somebody who made $600 a week on unemployment. And do, and do they realize what they look like? They look like the master's table has dropped some crumbs. And, and, and instead of the people standing up and overthrowing the master's table, they're fighting with each other over the crumbs and getting mad with each other over the crumbs that the other group got. Why are we fighting with each other over the crumbs from the master's table when there are enough of us to overthrow that shit? Jeff Bezos made $13 billion. And made, that's the wrong word. Jeff Bezos collected $13 billion in a single day. And we're fighting over who gets $600 a week in unemployment benefits. The problem is, is that, like I said at the beginning of this segment, that is a mindset that exists and it, and it persists. It, 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 it probably will always be here. The mindset of people who are more determined to fight against other workers than they are, than they will ever fight against capital. Then they, because they, they fancy themselves to be aspiring wealthy people, aspiring millionaires, aspiring billionaires. They just haven't come into, they're just temporarily displaced billionaires. And eventually they will get there. And so long as they have like the, the trinkets uh, of a luxurious lifestyle, like the, the appearance of a luxurious lifestyle, like so long as they can take the right picture for Instagram and so long as they can scrape up their money and borrow money from here and borrow money from there and, and go out to the club and pop some bottles. And, and if they if their best friend or their uncle really probably didn't send them a cash app, they wouldn't be able to pay the bill that night. And they probably would have been in jail that night. But it didn't matter because they made it through. They had a good time. They popped bottles. They sat on the rooftop. They toasted to the glamorous life. They took all the pictures and all the selfies they needed for Instagram. And everybody else thinks, oh, they're having such a fabulous life. When at the end of the day, they're just a worker struggling like every other worker struggling. But they don't see themselves as a worker struggling. They see themselves as an aspiring billionaire and they look down on other people who are in the same exact position as they are. And they need to make up their mind. Either they are going to continue to be the useful idiots for billionaires and find themselves on the wrong side of a revolution. Or they can come to their senses and realize that all of us, all of the workers across the world <laughs> need to unite. Pretty white city, pretty white city.